fundamental question in 3D computer vision and graphics is how to represent 3D data. These include point clouds, meshes, voxels, implicit coordinate functions, multi-view, and lastly, volume implicit like nerves. Usually, this depends on the application. But with the success of 2D deep learning and the wide adoption of deep learning in 3D vision and graphics, this emphasized the importance of the data structure used to represent 3D data. For 3D computer vision, 3D neural networks can operate directly on 3D data that are widely available, like 3D point clouds, and this has shown success along the direction for so many 3D applications like classification and segmentation. The other way is the indirect approach for 3D vision by projecting the 3D data into images in multi-view approach and then processing these images in a standard 2D pi pipeline. The benefits of multi-view at the time were clear. Leveraging 2D computer vision architectures and methods like CNNs and transformers, leveraging large labeled and diverse 2D image datasets like ImageNet. This indirect approach is similar to how humans understand the world. We don't have 3D sensors. We are naturally looking into objects from different angles and we rely on the images projected to our eyes to identify the 3D world. One issue arises when trying to combine widely available 3D point clouds with the multi-view, especially for segmentation, is how to properly aggregate the per view feature on every point. Previous works used heuristics like mean pooling of the features at the point level or diffusing the labels directly. Such heuristics of multi-view plus point cloud ignore the 3D geometry and depends on the viewing setup, which can lead to fooling views. In this 2D toy example, we show that for, for the same point at the center with different viewing angles can have different values of the projections. Averaging these values or max pooling or mode pooling them can actually give a wrong representation of the underlying function representing this point. We propose the multi-view point cloud, or shortly, point cloud, a novel 3D representation that, can, that is compact and naturally descriptive of the view projections of a 3D point cloud. Each point in the 3D point cloud is tagged with a point, which accumulates view features for that point. The core assumption in our voice is that point have variable values based on the viewing direction, while previous methods assume fixed values for point in point clouds and these views are shared across all the points, which constitute point cloud. This idea of view dependency is not entirely new. The planoptic function from 1995 used them to describe the world from any viewing angle. NERFs in 2020 used them to describe radiance fields in neural volume rendering. And even before, Marcus Aurelius, the great Roman emperor and philosopher, has a famous quote. Everything we hear is an opinion, not a fact. Everything we see is a perspective, not the truth. Basically, what we see is just one viewpoint of the underlying truth. So this is basically our point cloud representation, a set of points where each point is a set of view features for the corresponding point. Note that not all points appear from all the views, and hence each point has a different number of view features. Uh, different than other points in the same point cloud. In this table from the paper, we compare our point cloud to different representations like point clouds, nerves, and voxels. In our point cloud description, we said that each point is a set of view features of the corresponding point, but how do we get these view features? This is our full pipeline. It consists of a render R that renders point clouds X from different viewing angles U. The results images are processed by a 2D backbone that extract features per image. These features can be obtained by pre-training the 2D backbone for segmentation or classification, for example. Here we show examples of outputs of the 2D backbone of the point cloud renderings. After that, the 2D features we obtain, we can unproject these into point cloud features using the differentiable module phi b, which uses the mapping b created by the renderer that maps every point to pixel in order to unproject and lift the uh, features in 2D to point cloud features. 
In order to learn on the void space, we propose voidnet in the following form: a void conv followed by void max, where e the void conv can be different convolutional operations like shared MLP or graph convolution. I'll describe next, and the void max is just max of the view features in the view in the viewing direction, uh, only on the visible views features. This form of void net of max and of the view features is proven in theorem one in the paper to be a global approximator to any function on the set of angles u in the 2D case. We can use shared MLP as we said as a void conv but we also can make a graph convolution on these views features by defining some center node on the views features and defining an MLP on the edge features instead of directly applying them on the void feature. This is what we called void net uh, GCN and if we applied attention on these uh, edge features, it becomes void graph attention or void get. So the void net outputs point cloud features that are ready for any typical point cloud processing pipeline. The void net pipeline is trained end to end with focus on the void net part since the 2D backbone is pre-trained on the task in hands and we learn both F and C for the loss optimization. Here is a visualization of the data sets we used when rendered in our pipeline. The first data set is scan object NN with 2,900 point clouds with 15 classes. It, has, it consists of realistic 3D scans of object and has three variants. Shape net core 55 used for shape retrieval. Shape net parts for segmentation. We show the labels with different colors and these renderings are used to pre-train the 2D segmenter. Model net 40 used for occlusion robustness test. The backbone we used for classification is vision transformer base and for segmentation we used deep lab version three. Let's have a look at the results. On the realistic scan object NN dataset, we achieve state of the art results on all the three variants. We achieve state of the art on shape net core 55 retrieval benchmark, which is standard benchmark for shape retrieval compared to strong and recent multi-view methods that are specialized for retrieval. Here, we show how the renderings colored with normals and then 2D segmented can be unprojected to 3D predictions and compare them to 3D ground truth labels. Here, we show examples of the 3D segmentation from our void net. More examples. Here we compare our void net qualitative, qualitatively to mean fuse baseline, which is using the same pre-trained 2D deep lab version three backbone and compare all of them to the ground truth. Note how we can find details with VoidNet that mean fuse miss, like the window of the car. More comparisons. We measure part segmentation instance average mean IOU in the standard setup of ShapeNet parts and compare it to the baselines. We also evaluate the robustness of our void net approach to rotation by randomly retreating the object in test time and measuring the mean IOU. On shape net parts, we achieve strong segmentation performance on the aligned setup compared to other multi-view methods and robust performance to rotation compared to point-based methods. We also investigate occlusion robustness by simulating occlusions according to these directions following the MVTN paper. Here we show how the average test accuracy on model net over the six canonical occlusion directions, we achieve state-of-the-art results on many occlusion ratios and much higher than the point-based approaches for 3D classification. Here we study the effect of the number of views on the segmentation mean IOU performance for VoidNet 
compared to the mean fuse and label fuse. All of the three methods, the two baselines and our point net, use the exact same 2D backbone trained to segment the, uh, the 2D projections. Thank you.